Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode. I am here with Zoya the Explorer, but her government name, uh, Zoya <laughs> Awan. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. If not, she will clarify for me. I'm so, so excited to have her here with me today for this episode. We met, we are recording New Year's week, so January 6th is today, but we met back in September, I think it was. Um, yeah, it was October. Oh, October. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we met in the fall f at this fashion show event during fashion week in New York City. And we just like vibed so quickly because I'm Delhi the Explorer on Instagram and she's Zoya the Explorer. Oh, and we were like, <laughs> follow her on Instagram. <laughs> and we were like, wait, what? <laughs> We've never heard someone else have like our name on social media. <laughs> so, and that's how we knew it was not by accident. And yes. that's what led us to this moment here and you guys listening to it. <laughs> yes. So she's going to share with us her journey to get to right now. She has a very fancy, beautiful title, director of <laughs> public affairs at Walmart in corporate. So she is a corporate body who navigates corporate world. Um, also being her authentic self showing up and being seen in work and in other spaces. But before she got there, she had to do some things, right? Maybe go to college, uh, figure out and navigate her journey. So she's going to share with us her journey, what she's been through, um, and talk through her experiences and also some travel because she also did some study abroad. And if you're new to the podcast, I've done study abroad. I went to Spain and Australia and did my Fulbright in Brazil. So I love to travel. We love to travel. That's going to be... How many countries have you been to? Oh, I don't know the exact number. I should know this. Um, I can if you want out. to. It's I fun can to figure it out list. really quick. Let's see. I went to Paraguay, Argentina, Brazil, studied in Spain, lived in Australia, went to France, Scotland, Ireland. Uh, I feel like I'm missing a couple. I'll say eight for now, but I probably like 10. That's amazing. <laughs> Do you yeah, know top I, of the head? Yeah. So I have been, now I feel kind of weird because I don't want to like brag, you but it's brag. powerful because I went to 30, I've been to 38 countries. Oh my God. That's amazing. Um, so back when I studied abroad, I studied abroad in Cairo. Uh, I went to school in, in DC at American University and I studied abroad in Cairo because at the time, you know, my mom and I talked about it and she was like, well, go for something different. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was like, I went there and it was really, really a magical experience. But at that point, I like got the travel bug and I was like, I want to go to 30 countries before I turn 30. <gasps> I love so that. then that kind of just had become my thing. And I just would travel around. But and to be fair, you know, there's a, like some parts of Europe, you can kind of check a lot of countries off <laughs> real fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot the UK. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And you know, some of them it's like, uh, can we count Northern Ireland in the UK? Separately? Yeah. Probably not, but I'm gonna for now. Oh, I did. I did. <laughs> I did it separately. Um, yeah. And then more recently, so thankfully, when I hit that goal and COVID happened a little while ago, like, right. So luckily, I was getting very, I had already kind of hit that goal. And I've just been really, really lucky in my experience to just travel a lot. And that's something yeah, we connected on that exploring yeah. has stuck with me. And so my study abroad experience was what really, I would say lit that fire for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have my little mug here for our coffee chat. It says, me too. Adventures begin. So cheers. Amazing. Cheers. My little <laughs> sister gave me this one and it has us three sisters. So honoring the sisters in the world. I love that. This is a sisterhood for sure. Yeah. I love that so much. And starting a new adventure in the new year. We are in 2023 already. <laughs> so setting the intention to kind of build community, sisterhood, really amplify and um, if you're new in the in these podcast streets, um, we what my goal is to provide is a platform for individuals to showcase their story and see representation, right? Because we were talking a little bit about this about corporate in the typical person that is promoted may not look like us, even though we're we're in these spaces trying to really push these boundaries. So if part of this podcast is really important for me to show this representation, like, oh, Zoya can do this, I can do this. Or Delicia can do this, that means I can do it too. Because 
we've navigated these experiences and we're showing it. We're out here. We're doing the thing. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't really know how I got here, but I did. And you're going to get there too. And that's the point. Not like, and it's just like along the way, being able to support, have conversations and kind of not also need to reinvent the wheel on how we do these things. Right. And figure right. out what are the trip like tips and tricks that we can share with each other so that I would love to, it, for it to be these kinds of conversations to just be normal. Right. Absolutely. Do you think um, going to DC was part of um, your networking experience to like pr support you for your next step post graduation? Um, yeah. So to walk you through my journey a little bit, you know, I went to school in DC undergrad from Long Island, New York, with really this desire to realize that like Washington DC was the nation's capital. I had a lot of interest in a lot of like doing various interfaith work and things throughout high school and had done stuff at the UN and was very eager about like how you bring people together in dialogue and for to just make change that's positive. And it's funny because and one of the pieces I would always say as advice is like you look back and you can get those dots going backwards mm. but at the time going forward you're like it was just following that intuition mm. that said oh DC nation's capital and the support of good like you know my mother and people who supported me throughout which I'm very grateful for and so we went I went to school in Washington DC um, with the intention that it was the nation's capital and it really was it gave me so much access and I think different places have their own benefits but I when I was I did an internship at the State Department while I was in college I you know had was an intern at the office of White House correspondence you know doing these wonderful things that now I feel really realize how lucky I was to be in that city and going through all those things and um, still when I go back, I go to DC often in my role now, and I know a lot of people there and exactly the building of the network of people who then kind of continued to unravel my journey towards where I am now at Walmart. I love that. I think it's so important to connect with people, like you said, through internships and, um, opportunities that can exist within like the summer break or maybe winter break. Um, and, like you said, we sometimes just don't know how we got to certain spaces, but we just like kept going and applying. So do you think um, students should just like apply and just see what happens? Um, how do you navigate that kind of initial like imposter syndrome maybe that we feel when we're like, oh my God, the state capital, how do, how am I going to apply like first gen Latina student? Like my parents don't have experience with the state capital. How do, how do I apply to that? You know? Yeah. Or how do I do it? And you know, I would say that just be open and do it if you can. And if your time permits and you're, I feel like a lot of these things where there's certain gut intuitions, things will come your way. And if that's something that interests you, don't be afraid to try it or be open to it. I recently, and this is something I still am feeling, right? Imposter syndrome to and realizing that that's going to kind of be part of it until you know because there was this I'm like how did I get into these rooms do I do I belong here mm. and of course we belong and you've always belonged but it's just kind of knowing that that's part of it and experimenting I think sometimes with our families if they don't have the understanding of those things the good thing is when I was in college, I did really utilize my career center advisors. And again, it was like with them and again, me showing up with them as well, but guiding me, being willing to try certain different things. And um, and then also, I mean, you will apply to a lot of things and there'll be some things you'll get and some things you won't. And it's that trust. Now I can say this to myself. Mm. I couldn't say this then. Right. Right. But back then it was like, oh, this is not good. But so just trusting that like you got this and the right thing that's going to be for you cannot pass you. And I have been so lucky because when I look at some of the journey and I'm sure yours too, you connect the dots so going backwards and you're like how wow I went from DC then I moved to Arkansas because my job after my MBA so I did my my school my MBA at Georgetown part-time while I was working which 
I don't know if I would recommend that because it was a lot of work. <laughs> you know, that was the journey I was supposed to have. And I had right. people who supported me along the way. I did it. There's so, so many things that were so impossible. I've already done it. And it was at the time you just have to just, it's always impossible until it's done. Right. And how was living in Arkansas? That was a good experience, honestly, and better than I thought it was in okay. that, like, I will always, I still work there. I still feel connected to that area. And it was honestly, this role at Walmart allowed me to learn about the U.S. in a way I hadn't. Mm-hmm. So I've explored a lot around um America, uh, excuse me, globally, but in the U.S. I had not. So this role and in my role, I work with tribal communities. So I have been able to travel around Indian country, which was really fascinating because I got to get a more in-depth understanding of this community that is basically just untalked about in the U.S. I was like, how did I go to school? Like, an hour away from a reservation and I know about it. Right. And like these things and how we can have these conversations. So that was really fun. And, and then again, in Arkansas, part of it was just this proving to myself that you, if I commit to anything, I can do it. So, you know, I moved to this place, not knowing anybody. And of course I had the work support, but it was also like, everybody looked at me like I had 10 heads, like moved to Arkansas, you know, like (laughs) what? It was like, I got this really amazing big girl job. Like, yeah. Walmart and (laughs) oh but you're gonna Arkansas (laughs) and you know I'm grateful again I had good advisors and coaches like I remember even my you know leader at Microsoft was like listen everybody's got to do their time you do your time and like then you'll be back and you know and but then also when I did move and these were the kinds of things there were certain things that were put into place in the authentic conversations with my leadership that made it so that I felt comfortable that like I could, this could be adaptable as necessary. And now, I mean, I, I love it there and I still feel connected to there. I have friends there. I have like a, a dance community there. You know, there's a lot of, you would be like surprised. Uh, but I'm also a bit of, you know, I live in Long Island now. I'm, I'm remote for my job. So I do flutter around and travel a lot, which allows me to kind of experience a little bit of everything. Right. How long were you in Arkansas for? I was there for two years. Two years. Okay. I think now on the other side, maybe because we're a little older as we're maybe like considered mid-level career. No, got some wisdom now. We got some wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> like, would we be considered middle, mid-career level maybe? I don't know. Whatever level we're at, we got some wisdom for y'all listening on the podcast. But <laughs> and, you know, you guys who are listening, you guys have wisdom too. We exactly, all exactly, so. exactly. I was gonna say, like, we were able to do certain things because we trusted that wisdom, right? We trusted that intuition. Um, and same for me. I right out of undergrad, I moved to South Carolina and went to like the deep south and learned so much about the United States. Similar to you, like I was very global. But in the United States, I had only really been to New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. So that was my tri-state understanding. I went to school in Connecticut, so um, or undergrad in Connecticut. So it's like that was a huge culture shock, but still a great experience right out of undergrad. So I think if you're thinking of doing something so random out of undergrad, but you have the support maybe from your friends, family, or like the job is providing for that move to happen, like take that risk and you're going to learn so much about yourself. Like it was tough at moments and I cried a lot. I'm not going to lie. Girl, but... you see a, a lot, a lot of tears. <laughs> I shed a lot. Of people who had to like listen to those tears. <laughs> my mom. Oh my God. My mom. <laughs> yes. <so> seriously. <laughs> they were stressed out for me uh, <laughs> crying, but we learned so much about ourselves and like I still talk to people from South Carolina and like I still have a community there that Mm. I could literally go back to cross and they'd be like so excited or like have a great reunion and like like we cultivated that like you said you did that in Arkansas so if you're young and listening take that risk and like you'll learn so much about yourself and you don't know who you're gonna meet down there and to uh, one little piece that I just thought of a story because we were talking about these discomfort things and our mom's when I went to study abroad and in Cairo, 
the first couple of days, I was so culture shocked. You used the word culture shock. Yes. And it was so just scary. And I just wanted to give absolutely up. And I was just like, oh, I was crying to her on the phone. I was like, I need to come home. And, you know, my mom, and sometimes, you know, tough love is good too. She was just like, and I say this to say that, like, when you have those moments, don't take them so seriously sometimes. Right. It was just something that needed to pass. She was like, you're going to stay there. You're there for this many months you'll figure it out. And I'm like, <laughs> um, you know, we tease her because she's a little bit tough like that. Yeah. Right. But in the hindsight, it was, and when we talk about like our immigrant parents or, you know, being yeah. first generation, like that toughness is what made it that then I stayed and I had the best experience of my life that like triggered so many beautiful things and friendships. And, you know, like I've over the years I've attended like a friend's wedding, so-and-so place or such and such thing. And, just uh it was really at the end of the day a blessing but it it's funny how we get scared of those sometimes right in the moment when it comes at us too fast and you just have to push through that and uh and just allow the tears you know yeah yeah not be afraid of the tears like it's okay to to feel our feelings Mm -hmm. they say feeling is healing exactly feeling is healing oh i'm gonna write it down so that could be a tweet tweet moment Please <laughs> no, don't forget to Zoya at Zoya the Explorer. Add right? Zoya the Explorer. <laughs> or you can do it too because you're Delhi the Explorer and we have that connection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll do a collab post. Yeah. Both of our I'm so excited. I'll have both explorer in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's true. Like, what do they say? What's that phrase? Diamond is diamond in the rough, like diamonds are are born made under, under the pressure under yeah pressure right so i guess we're diamonds that's the difference between coal and diamonds oh yeah girl, a lot of pressure <laughs> but sometimes i'm like when is this pressure gonna be over when? it never stops guys <laughs> it never stops <laughs> have you seen that meme for 2023 it's like am i on the soft girl list i'm like not i'm not on the battle list for um what is it for like god or buddha or whoever you whoever you like no, I have not okay. seen that. You haven't seen it? Okay, I'll send it to you. I'll also post it on social media too. It's like, I don't want to, me calling God because I don't want to be on the like uh, front line warrior uh, oh. woman <laughs> girl anymore. I want my soft girl era. Oh, I see. I see. That's a fun. Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah. So, yeah, well, definitely not in that right now. It doesn't seem yeah, <laughs> the soft girl still, era. We're still, we're still in the diamond era. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, one of my friends, is like you're becoming, you know, a butterfly. This is part oh. of butterfly, and um, that metaphor. Sometimes I'm like, okay, but when am I actually the butterfly? And you know, that's part of it. Like we're always transforming, yes. and just know that every win is worth celebrating. So for those of you who you know have applied to colleges and you know didn't know when you were going to get into college and where you went celebrate that you're in college like you dream dreamt of that one day and you made it and you can continue on however you do but knowing that it's just part of trusting that it's all happening exactly you have to celebrate all the wins like even even like researching something you're interested in I think is a win because Mm sometimes you even get so scared to like look at the application or a deadline or look at a job and like we psych ourselves out even before looking um so just like celebrating the fact that you're maybe like emailing someone to talk about something um about a role or an opportunity or if something seems interesting um like celebrate that and I think that's something we constantly have to remind ourselves to like celebrate the win, celebrate the things like even showing up to that like fashion event. Like we both went alone. Right. And we were both like, wait, you came alone. You came alone. Wow. We have some like, um, I guess I go alone a lot of places and it's a really great experience. And like a lot of magic happens when you're alone. Yeah. Like we met each other and we're having this and uh, a lot of, I've, do you do a lot of solo travel or what do you do usually? I haven't done a lot of solo. The The only solo travel I did was when I moved to Brazil, like on a Fulbright. That was probably the longest extended abroad thing I did alone, which was the experience. It was nine months, nine, ten months uh, living in Brazil, even though we had a lot of support and structure. Wow. Like, I was That's still amazing. There alone. 
so I think that's the biggest long-term alone thing I've done but every other travel was with like friends or family um, yeah and me and I've done both I don't do a ton of so but it just yeah. like my because of my work and things I'm often like fluttering between things sometimes alone yeah. I've done some trips alone when, you know, I say like, if there's an opportunity and I couldn't find someone else or depend or sometimes a window in between or something, but just kind of being willing to realize that there's nothing wrong with going to an event that sounds interesting to you, but you don't have anyone to go with. Because a lot of times when I go with someone, I end up being just stuck to that person. Mm -hmm. And then the point of meeting new people, creating new, sparking new connections and gets kind of goes beyond, goes secondary I guess you could say right right and this was that was like our goal right and then I did end up making some really dear friends from that event and also just really experienced some interesting projects more connections it was great yeah I, I loved like and apart from going to like events alone do you maybe go out to dinner take yourself on a date do you go but like I think global travel alone is a little bit more accessible like you can see someone doing that alone but like day-to-day -day things like do you take yourself on dates to go to a museum by yourself or like go out to dinner or lunch or like coffee dates and just like sit in at a bar by yourself like have you done that I've done that before a lot I do it all the time but it's like I guess I just don't have the intention like oh I'm taking myself out on a date and then yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. I've been there and then I'll be like okay but I often I have no, I have a lot of meals alone because I travel a lot for work. Right. right? right so right. sometimes it's just like, okay, I go hop into the restaurant, whatever it is to get. I do eat that alone. I'll, I haven't gone to a movie alone recently, but I don't even watch that many movies. So if yeah. I did, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't mind. <laughs> but the example basically, and recently, sometimes if I haven't had a day alone in a long time, because I'm I'm alone, but I'm also constantly around a lot of people. So it's kind of like I do appreciate when I can be in my own space and energy and just kind of flowing through um, and doing whatever it is in my mind and not feeling like because when I'm doing something with someone else, I really am always conscious. It's just good of that other person and what it is that they their needs are to make sure they're right. okay, all of that. And when I'm alone, it just makes it that I can kind of just go just flow with however I want. Yeah. And like just kind of go with the magic of who you're meeting and what's happening and just exactly. Like figure it out along the way go with the magic go with the magic follow the magic <laughs> that'll that could be our 2023 like vision i'll write it down we have a lot of good ones we have a lot go of the magic <laughs> and feeling is healing yes um i love that I know you mentioned earlier about immigrant families and first generation um, experiences. Would you identify as first gen? I know some people have different thoughts on what that definition looks like. And if you do, what does that look like for you? And if you don't, that's okay too. Yeah. So that's an interesting question because there are different ways that I guess people look at it. I was the first generation born here. So okay. yes, my mother and my side, my family story, my grandfather on my maternal side is the one who immigrated here and he came, you know, American dream. That's a whole nother story, which I really honor and admire him. Um, who passed away a few years ago, but really recognizing how then, you know, my mom was actually raised here. So she did go to school and everything here. Um, she's a pharmacist and has kind of instilled that value set in us. So I've had some a bit like, you know, I feel like some first generation experiences are where parents have no sense of kind of understanding of the systems, et cetera. In my case, my mom did, but of course those things are continuing always to evolve. Yeah. And I realized that like, so my family's from Pakistan and even in the Pakistani community, even in the Latino community, this is in all the communities, there's still so many, um, there's such a gap between that for that generational the people that whose parents were born there and are growing up here or born here versus growing up etc and just um recognizing that but also saying realizing that like we have a great resource in each other so trying to kind of continue to uplift our inner voices and then I just I feel like in my experience 
I was lucky because I just trusted those little pieces of pushing, but the first generation stuff is always unique to navigate. Yeah, absolutely. I think How was it for you? For me, my parents immigrated here. So I'm also first generation born here. My parents were born in Paraguay. Um, they navigated education system in Paraguay, but not here. So that was like applied to college and navigating that was new for our family but even now for myself and my like the older cousins and then my younger cousins it's it's very different now the experience even with like a 10 year like even though I'm first gen and I went to school here and they're going to school now in undergrad it was still a very different application experience for them and then they also experienced COVID in undergrad which is totally Mm -hmm. new for everyone so I think even though your mom navigated school in the United States, you're still first gen because it changes like the application cycle every 10 years. Like, oh yeah, absolutely. So and you know, like it's funny because in my siblings, there's four of us mm-hmm. and we're a little bit age gap between all of us. And my mom, like she, like each time of the process, it was different, you know, and it, or it's slightly different. There's still pieces, you know, the SAT changed right. or you need the ACT or you need the SAT. And like, right. for example, like my younger siblings, sometimes they would come to me us, but sometimes not because it was like also in our own ways, the systems were sort of changing on what we had to be doing, right. but on how, but just the trusting on the school systems and the advisors and, and getting there is really helpful as well, for sure. Yeah. And even as an a- a academic advisor, now the work I do like in my day job, it changes every year what I need to advise students on the 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 like overarching journey story doesn't change but what changes are like the logistics of it right like the common app versus there's a new application system out now I forget the name but um what was it called common app and I don't remember but or like some <laughs> schools are SAT ACT optional and like, I remember the common app I'm getting PTSD right now <laughs> <laughs> like even the financial aid process is so so different like I remember I had to like scan and fax and email documents. Now everything's online and the questions are different. And it's just like, even from me helping and supporting students or my cousins, it's like, it's, we're still first gen. Like we're still going through this experience. I may, I may be able to offer advice and support and academic advising, but it's still like a learning curve. For sure. And, you know, I think to be in fairness, it's typically it's a learning curve for anybody. And then I think it gets even more steepened when you're coming from, you know, navigating different identities and family yes. structures and cultures. And um, I do feel disconnected because also some of that is like you asked me questions about this, like I forgot, you know, <laughs> we blocked it out (laughs) yeah you're not every day right which is great that's why you're keeping up to date and I think that that's wonderful because at least you're able to provide some advice on some of the specifics right but if you were to ask me specifics I wouldn't really know (laughs) yeah it's it does change all the time so we're all we're all just learning along the way I hope absolutely I I hope these conversations provide that kind of ease and like okay we're all navigating we're all figuring it out it's okay to be where you're at and trying to navigate wherever you're at and not put like maybe so much pressure on ourselves um but that also comes with like the immigrant experience right we we want to prove that we like our parents immigrated and it was worth it and what their sacrifice was um so <laughs> processing intergenerational trauma <laughs> <laughs> out of us um of us. <laughs> yes but no absolutely and like the point is is that I think there are some things that like we kind of alluded to earlier there's some things from the immigrant family mindset that are really precious and I feel like we can continue to bring that forth and honor those pieces of, you know, the hard work ethic and things. But there's a lot of things that are imbalanced and distorted for different reasons, because that was what their, like that situation needed. Right. Yeah. But now we're lucky. Like we have a lot more resources at our fingertips. We can, you know, do things in faster ways or find more innovative ways to do things. You know, I think about my grandma and when I was working from home at, 
I was doing some remote work at her house. You know, when my grandfather used to go to work, it was like he left at this time of the day and he came back at this time of the day. And then the rest of the day was time with her. <laughs> and then like, she'd be like, Oh, I, I was like in the base of working. She was like, Oh, you're on a call or who are you doing for work? You know, it was very confusing for her because these things are shit so different now. So, you know, when, and with that, I'm sure like everybody can kind of relate to some bits of that. And, um, we have a great opportunity to kind of redefine what it means to be these first generation children of immigrants, people of color who are just really excited about enjoying our lives and honoring our families. Absolutely. I love that redefining what it looks like to work, right? How do you explain remote work to your parents or your grandparents who have this idea that you left it in whatever 8 a.m and got back at 6 p.m and then you're just home um and navigating. or even if it's just like redefining yourself right and right. that like okayness of there will be certain ambiguity certain things are shifting and changing but it's like how you choose to work how you choose to engage and brand yourself and now in the age of social media and all that you know me and you were talking about that a little bit i think there's a great opportunity to empower through that as well and um just making sure we're trying to use our tools and resources and dreaming really big yeah because like do you think that your parent delicia could have ever imagined you are where you are now when they were coming here you know yeah i ask that question all the time like did you think you would come to united states and they're like i mean we thought about it but we didn't really think it would happen (laughs) Yeah, like, wow, like nothing we do compared to what they've probably done, you know? <laughs> I know. Every time I get scared or like nervous about something, I'm like, wait, they immigrated here without knowing English and they got jobs and they bought houses and they bought cars. Mm. And we're like scared of studying abroad, but I know the language. <laughs> yeah (laughs) so I like try to reframe my mindset too it's like wow we have like you said earlier we have so much wisdom that we just need to tap into Mm -hmm. like and that's a big thing too like we like just keeping reframing your mindset I feel like back to if I think about advice of myself